In this video, we're going to be showing you how to install cylinder liners as well as how to properly measure your liner protrusion. Hey guys, so this is a follow-up to our part one series of how to cut counterbores and measure liner protrusion. And we cut counterbores in the previous video, and what we got here is our liner shims. The first thing you're going to do before installing your liners or the liner shims is actually measure them. These are supposed to be right around 30, but sometimes you'll get a slightly thinner or thicker one, and you'll want to know that before installing them. So you can see here, I've already cut the counterbores. I've got the numbers marked to what the depths were, and I've got the liner shims here installed. Now these are directional. You want the part numbers to face up because the bottom sections are beveled to make up for the cut. Now the liners are installed what I call dry. As you can see, you can pick them right back up. There's no seals on them yet. And the reason I do this is I like to do a measurement before the liners are installed at the end because once you install them with the seals, you don't want to have to pull them back out again. It could damage the seals and you don't generally want to reuse the seals. Now this does take about an extra half an hour to do and I'm speeding up here in time lapse. But I like to do this because like I said, I don't want to have to pull the liners back out once I install them with the seals. Now do you have to do this step? No, you do not. So what I'm doing there is inst install the liners with the shims, the spacer plate shim, and then the spacer plate. And this is the same procedure we will use later when we actually install the liners. Then we're going to install these. They're basically very short cylinder head bolts. They're actually track bolts, and they have two special washers on them. One is brass, and one is a kind of a fiberglass composite. And you saw me, I use like a little drill impact that puts almost no torque out, and then I actually torque these to around 40 foot-pounds. Now the CAT spec's actually 70 foot-pounds, but I found if you do the 70 foot-pounds, it tends to split the fiberglass washer, and I've, I've seen no difference between torquing the 40 or 70. And all you're really doing is holding down the liner. So you can see I just assembled everything there. Now we're going to be pulling out the liners to install them with the seals. So... What I'm doing is I'm pulling them out one at a time, and then I'm installing seals and putting them back in. Now, I'm going to slow this down and show you in much more detail what I'm doing here. I just wanted to do the first ones in time lapse here. And then on number four, I'm going to go into detail on how to do it. So number five and six, the ones on the left, have been installed with the seals already. And we are preparing to put four in. There's a couple things to notice. So our liner shim's in. You can see part number's there. 6 i 30,000 shim. And you can see that I've cleaned up the bores where the seals sit. There's an expansion ring that sits there, and then your liner seals down here. Now you can also see I've got an earplug in the oil gallery port in the crankshaft. Usually I'll wrap the cranks with tape and a towel, but on this one I decided to try putting earplugs in the oil ports. I think in the future I'm gonna use the earplug and wrap them. But anyway, so we've got our liner ready to install here. Now this is a C15 liner and it comes with the seals. There are four seals in here, three O-rings and an expansion seal. You got the three O-ring grooves on the bottom and then your expansion seal. And there is a science to this. So you need to install the seals with the purple one on top because that's where the coolant is. The middle one obviously goes in the middle and then the oil's on the bottom because that's what it's exposed to is oil. Now the filler band's a little different. The filler band does not go on dry either. The filler band has to be basically soaked in oil or coated in oil heavily. And the bottom O-rings, you're gonna to wanna to use this. It is a rubber lubricant or a tire soap. And then like I said, you're gonna use engine oil on the filler band on the top. You're also gonna to wanna to put the tire soap on the block where the liner is gonna go in. You want it to be as lubricated as possible. So what I'm doing here is I'm gonna put a little bit of oil on the top where the filler band's going to go. You do not ever want to put the filler band on dry. It's supposed to swell up with oil. And if you don't put oil on it and it doesn't swell up properly, it can actually fail to seal. The bottom, the soap is just a lubricant, so it slides in, doesn't catch, cut the O-rings, which would be a nightmare, because if you cut your O-rings and then you put the cylinder head on and everything, you're gonna have coolant getting into your oil. Now I use a, you could see it didn't, the tire soap didn't come in that I, that's a body wash bottle. I find it works really good though because that way you don't have to pour it out. It literally just squirts out a few press on the top. So best way to do it in my opinion. So what I'm doing is I'm prepping the liner. So I put tire soap on the O-rings on the liner out of, out of shot. 
and then I soaked and installed the filler band. Now you have a short amount of time once you get oil on that filler band that you need to install it. And then what I'm gonna be doing is using this liner press. This is actually a Monaco tool, which is the same brand that I was using for the uh, liner protrusion height gauge. And this tool is pretty simple. It's got a plate, and I believe this plate also fits uh, the N14 engines. I don't know though, because I don't really work on that many Cummins. And it just sits in there, use two of the head bolts. And then all it's gonna do is, you cannot push these in by hand. Well, um, maybe if you can, you know, bench press 800 pounds you could, but all you're gonna do is run the head bolts in, not super tight, you're just running them in so they're seated. And then what I'm gonna do is use actually a drill. You don't need to hammer this in, it's just a drill. And it's gonna gently push the liner in so it should not damage the seals. You don't wanna hammer these in or anything. It'll just simply press it in. Smooth and easy to go. Now you can check out Monaco Tools if you wanna purchase this. And uh, I'll have a link in the description. That is liner installed. So basically all I gotta do now is do the front three cylinders, doing the same thing. So there's what I just did, sped up. And then we're gonna be moving to cylinder three, doing the same thing. See, I lubricated it before I installed it, everything. It's the same procedure on all the cylinders. Now, do I need to leave the other cylinders in and do it one at a time? Couldn't I have pulled them all out? Yes, yes, I could have. Uh, I just, it, for room's sake, having the liners all over the tables and stuff and getting keeping them in order, I like to do it this way. So once all the liners are installed, then you are going to be back to where you were before. Now, since I already measured liner protrusion, do I really need to measure it again? Yes, because this is going to be how the engine is finally assembled. You don't want to guess that your previous measurements were accurate when you only have a two and a half thousandths variance. Remember, it has to be between three and a half and six thousandths. So you can see I put my spacer plate shim in there and my spacer plate, and we're using a new spacer plate here. I always recommend using a new one. You can see my liner height gauge sitting there. And we're gonna be doing our final measurements here. These liners will not be coming out unless our readings are off. Now I've already did the first one, cylinder one. And you can see I've circled because we're using shims. We have between three and a half and six thousandths. That is a very tight window. If you've machined the deck, you can go between one and six, but since we're using counter boards, it's three and a half to six. And you can see our measurements were five, five and a half, five and five. So within spec. Now you can see those are the numbers I wrote on the liner, uh, not the liner shim, the uh, spacer plate from when I did the dry measurements. So what we're gonna do now is actually show you how to measure how to do it with them in. And then I'll record the numbers. Now this is a somewhat tedious process, but if you're doing a C15 or anything that requires the liner protrusion to be measured, this is a very important process. So we've got our liner height gauge here. That's what they call a sled gauge because it's on a little sledge and it's a micrometer. And all you're really gonna do is pick a point. There are four spots on the liner you need to measure. And then you're just gonna slide the sled gauge from the spacer plate onto the liner and then measure how much it protrudes or projects past. And we are right at five thousandths, so that's good. Like I said, you don't want it over six and you don't want it under three and a half. And also you can't have more than two thousandths variance in a single liner, so you couldn't have all sixes and then three and a half. So that one's good, we're gonna write it down at 0 .005 thousandths. And then moving on to our next position, And these are actually numbered in the CAT system, A, B, C, and D. It doesn't really matter as long as they're all within specification. So just slide it over and you can see it. that looks about just under five. So we're gonna go with a four there. So why is there variance? Why aren't they all five? Well, the cutting head is gonna leave a little bit of movement. It's not a 100% dead on cut. Also, there's little imperfections in the liner, in the deck, in the spacer plate shim, in the spacer plate. There's a million variants here, and that's why you need to measure because you can't just tell. You just can't look at it and tell. That's why you have to measure. And it's not, there's not something inherently wrong with the cutter or something. You'll 
at least I've never seen where you're no variance in all the liners unless someone has doctored the paperwork. You're always going to have slight variance. There's even variance in using the measuring tool. So we have a five thousandths there. You can move the measuring tool over the liner and then move it into position and you'll get more than a thousandths variance depending on what point in the liner, what point in the spacer plate you're on. So just be honest to yourself. Try to keep a consistent pattern with how you're measuring these and you'll come out with a good result. So our last measurement here. Now I'm obviously not going to show you every single measurement on this. This would take a very long time, but each liner is the same. You're basically just going to measure each one. So we have a five thousandths there. So we have a five, a four, five, and a five. So everything is within specifications. So that's great. So if you remember the start of the first video, number four cylinder had sank. It was minus five thousandths protrusion. So if we fix the problem, let's find out. Hopefully we're around five. Look at that, five thousandths protrusion. So a ten thousandths difference. That should keep the head gasket from failing. And how about a little destruction of the week? This week's destruction of the week is actually a viewer submitted one. And not really destruction of the week, more like um, maybe not the best repair of the week. So 3126, Jake sent me these pictures and you can see the exhaust manifold on the left. They had an exhaust leak and apparently the bolts were falling out, but instead of fixing it, they decided to basically get as much silicone around the leak as possible. Obviously with undesirable results. This did not of course fix the problem. Still had to get it removed and get new gaskets and fix it correctly. Also the clamp missing some uh, spacers that I decided to silicone that and for some reason there's a coat hanger in there. Anyway, thanks for watching.